Maxime m'a dit, je pense que j'ai fait un petit déjà, et c'est bon, j'ai passé aussi la fin et <rire> la conférence. <rire> je sais, je fais un petit déjà, peut-être, hein, je ne suis pas sûr, <rire> mais je peux le régler. Si, il n'est pas sûr, mais si tu lui donnes la main encore 5 minutes, il va être sûr de la Là, quand je clique, ça part sur YouTube, tout ce que vous dites. Hein. Ah, je ok. Vous, je euh... vous aurais prévenu. Voilà, je clique. Mm -hmm. Attention à ta, à ta table. Ah, ah, ouais. soon. À la scène que tu vas envoyer, c'est pas le blackboard, c'est les slides. Non, mais bah, j'ai ça. Là. Je pense que j'avais demandé ça euh, à un certain moment. Parce que la chose que je suis allé faire chez Michel Cohn, c'est la première fois que j'ai fait un jeu. Et après, il y a eu une deuxième, une deuxième fois. Mais la troisième fois, j'ai eu l'impression que, que j'avais vraiment le droit de faire tout ce que j'ai voulu. Sanjay, tu entends Quelqu'un en salle virtuelle entend Allô La salle virtuelle, vous, vous entendez Pas le nom de couper le micro Ben justement, ça c'est une bonne réponse. <rire> non, parce qu'elle me la va chanter. Ouais, et je te déteste exprès. <rire> Ouais, sauf que Maxime, Maxime est plus rapide. Moi, j'aurais posé une question pour qu'elle. Il faut que je vous explique, les gars. On aurait dû le laisser faire pour une demi-heure. Quand, quand on laisse la main aux professionnels, on voit tout le gars du coup. La salle virtuelle, vous nous entendez Ok, Sanjay is en train d'écrire quelque chose. Merci. Voilà, alors le, la salle réelle, euh, qui veut venir au cours, rentrez s'il vous plaît. <rire> Ça commence. Hein? Ça commence. Euh... C'est bon, Michel, là, je, je t'envoie en ligne. Michel Boer, quatrième. Good morning. Uh, so we shall uh, today end this series of lectures with uh, two main uh, themes. The first one for the first hour will be the what I promised for so long, which is uh, the definition of rough integrals and some of their properties and simple things. And then Uh, the last uh, hour will be devoted to the study of a nice example of rough graph, which is uh, <laughs> unrelated to the rest. But it's, a, it's a nice example, uh, and you can use some explicit application and see what is going on, and it's almost relevant for physics. <laughs> so, um, just to motivate, so uh, I think I explained last time that, uh, in fact, so our aim is, as usual, we would like to define the rough integral, let's say from A to B, of something because this is a rough integral I want to denote it by a bold face uh, x and I said last time that I wanted to uh, define this using a uh, definition which is as you can imagine so what we're, what we're going to do is look at uh, first order So we shall even naively I repeat it again because but why not? So we shall say that this is essentially 
f of x a x b minus x a plus prime of x a and then I would see a double integral somehow and um, this double integral I'm going to replace by its uh, Fast version and subdivide. So, which means that in fact I'm going to associate this to gamma SP, which is f of xs, xp minus xs, and just repeating plus uh, f prime of s x a b and then I will introduce graph Riemann sums and so essentially if I have a subdivision a tag subdivision which will be a equals T0 less than or equal T1 blah 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 less than or equal T2n equals b. I will define uh, as usual. So my notation for that is maybe a bit too complicated, but let's uh, how, what did I choose in fact? The letter I chose. I just want to make sure. So R delta, and I will indicate a certain number of things here. And it's going to be here the sum n plus one p to n plus two minus gamma p to n plus one p to n plus one. Could you slightly lower the blackboard? Yes. Okay, so that's what. Well, okay, so that's that's what we're going to uh, do basically. But we would like to make something just slightly more general. First of all, because it's it's if okay. I've, most of the time, I've been sticking to one dimension, but for the, the manipulations we are going to do. It's not totally obvious how they would generalize to a, a multidimensional setting, so I will write explicitly tensor products and all that in what follows uh, to see where, how things go. For, you see, this is this lives in a tensor product, and then it's important to know uh, where uh, uh, things uh, <coughs> hit on the tensor product, and also. I think it should be estimated by the uh, blackboard. Yes. Um, thank you. And, the, and then if, uh, if we go to that, maybe yeah. I should also add the parentheses. So before doing that, I would just like to uh, observe, uh, make a, a small observation. Is that th that's something we are not totally used to think about when you look about think about uh, Riemann integrals. Or uh, even the big integrals, I don't know exactly. But the point is the following: that in fact, when we define the Young integral, we didn't define this for Young integral. In fact, if you look at the notes, there are some comments on what you can do with this. Uh, with this, so you try to integrate function of xs against xs but what we did was in fact we did to some we went to something more general which was ys dxs so somehow <coughs> we decided to uh, loosen the relationship between the integrator and the integrant somehow well of course they, they had some they they needed to have some joint regularity which means that if this one was beta older and this one alpha older, alpha plus beta has to be had to be strictly larger than one. But apart from that, the integrant and the integrator were completely independent. 
And if you think about it in, in uh, for Brownian motion, for instance, in stochastic integrals, there is a similar uh, situation that, in fact, you can integrate things which are not at all functional of Brownian motion or in a very, very indirect way. That's the it, it, it integral similarly. Ito does much more. Then integral f of bs dbs. Then we can really do something. We can really do things much more general than that. It's usually this thing here is going to be a complicated function of Brownian motion, but it can depend on all the uh, past and all that, so it can be rather nasty somehow. Okay, so and we would like to do a step forward uh, this situation. Also for half path, and the situation for half path is a little bit less good, but you can nevertheless, at a low price, generalize a little bit. Because we are going to, we are going to do something which is a bit better. We are better than than, than just f of x, and this leads us to the notion of controlled half path. And I, I already said a few uh, sentences about it, but. Uh, And the idea is the following. So you imagine, so the, I will reinstate uh, uh, some uh, tensor products here. So let me do it uh, gently. I will, as usual, be totally silent about topology. I will indicate norms and all that in tensor products. Uh, just imagine they've been chosen properly and don't ask me what, what they really mean. It's what but it, they exist. So we imagine that we have an A, B to F, and these are just vector spaces and Banach spaces, in fact. And now you imagine that X is alpha older. So for that, you need a norm. That's okay. Now that's not too complicated. So let me mention nevertheless that there is a norm E. And here there is a norm F. You imagine that X is alpha older, and you define. This is definition. It says that y is controlled by x. If the, I will I will give a precise definition. Local fluctuations of y are of order r. Let's say it's order x. And the precise definition is the following is that we are going to write yt minus ys minus something I call y prime s, xt minus xs. There is a y prime such that. You have this here should be of order t minus s to the twelfth. Okay. So you see this is of order t minus s to the alpha. So this has to be as well of order t minus s to the alpha, and because of this structure, indeed. When x t minus x s is very small, this one has to be very small. Locally, the fluctuations of y are controlled by both of x, and I would just like to mention that y prime s, or each given s, it's, it belongs in fact to the continuous maps from uh, e to f. Uh, Am I correct? E to F, yes. So you see, this here is an endomorphism, and this it, it takes an element of E and takes it into an element of F. So you, you indeed these things live in the same space. And it is also natural to ask in dimension. 
Moreover, let's wait time the alpha is there. And in fact, you see, the point is that if you interchange x and y and take the difference, th this equation implies, this implies that in fact, when you take y prime s, y, y prime t minus y prime s, x t minus x s, this should be of order, this is of order t minus s to the two alpha. And of course, this, this could be possible even if the, this is alpha older. If this is alpha older, then we're done. So this is a sufficient condition. This is not a necessary condition because this one could be uh, much, uh, well, much smaller and then this one could be bigger. But we demand, we, we need some uniformity in things. And so the, the mathematical definition is that this guy should be an endomorphism and the dependence on S should be alpha older. Okay. So, um, right, right, okay, so then there is some vocabulary. So, uh, y, y prime is called a control of uh, y by x, and y prime is called the Gubinelli derivative of y with respect to x. If there is initiative by pushing it? No. Or? No. Okay, so. so you can write dy is equal to y prime dx. <coughs> I'm sorry? dy is y prime dx more or less? Yes. Uh, y prime is not unique. No, okay, so it depends. depends. So let's, so the point is, so, uh, the, uh, suppose x is in fact better than alpha. We, 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 we have defined it with a certain exponent alpha, but if x is alpha older on a compact uh, Interval, it can also be two. If it's two alpha older, it's also alpha older. So imagine that now, suppose x is two alpha older. Y prime equals any older. Object is okay. Um, is that really what I wanted to say? I'm sorry, uh, I have to assume that x and y are both two alpha older, then I can take anything for y prime. Okay, uh, nevertheless, there is, as you ask it, nevertheless, you can ask that. Um, there is a notion of X truly raft. I've not, for the more time being, I've not talked about uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, truly, is there, is there an E in truly? Yes, and there, there, no. Truly. The, the, the one employs the term raft, but it, X doesn't have to be a raft path. If Integral in uh, AB, the sub of xt minus xs norm E divided by t minus s to the two alpha s different from t belonging to E is equal to plus infinity. So we take we, we demand that taking an arbitrary there is no interval on which on which uh, x is two alpha older, and then then y prime if it exists then it's pretty obvious. A 
No, because if you are if you are confined in the subspace, you will define the y prime of s yeah. within within the within the subspace in which s is, and on the other uh, in the other direction or the right away. Uh, you can put whatever you want. You know, it's a bit like a, I mean that's correct. What I'm saying. Alpha in one direction. I'm so, I'm so you're perfectly correct, and uh, I've been uh, yes, I, okay. This is because I was just in one day. I guess in higher dimensions, you will have to be more uh, careful. Yeah. In one day, this is the, 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 okay. True roughness you can define in any circumstance, and the y prime is unique. It exists if you can, when you could. Okay. You're perfectly. And as an exercise, for those of you who know wrong in motion. Brownian motion is truly rough. Yes, that's correct, yes. Okay, so you're perfectly right. Um, now that we have this concept, we can generalize a little bit the definition of uh, rough integrals. Okay, so uh, I, I should quote two, uh, a few properties before I move on. I should quote two properties. Of course, uh, there, is, there is a rule that uh, if you have, I will not write down the, all the, the details, but if you have this and these two are controlled, then the, there is a control also. There is linearity, obviously. It, 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 the Gubinelli derivative has nice, proper, uh, familiar properties. Then y prime plus lambda z prime is going to be a control. X and if y, y prime, z, z prime, r, and then there is a real number, and you also have the product, y z, y z prime plus y prime z. Okay, so uh, yes. Here I'm, I write it only in 1D. Here, obviously, it makes sense for anything. Here, I would like, have to look at the bilinear form or whatever, the continuity and all that. And then, well, I could formulate this also. It, it would work as well, but uh, it's a bit more complicated. And uh, one which is not totally obvious, but which is easy nevertheless, so I will not uh, even sketch the proof, is that if f is differentiable with f prime Lipschitz on the range of y, and again I restrain to one d, then f of y y prime f prime of y is a control. So 
so uh, this, or this in principle could also be formulated in more dimensions, but I will not try to do it. And the uh, last one is the chain rule. And for, for that point, we can so you imagine this time that uh, this time y is from a b to uh, f z is from a b to a certain uh, space g and then you, you imagine that y y prime is a control by x and z z prime is a control by y and then the conclusion is that uh, properly understood uh, z z prime y prime is a control by x so this is really the chain the usual chain rule and it works in uh, you don't have to think uh, what it works in any dimensions. So in the case, okay, so just, just to be sure, in the case uh, of uh, infinite dimensional spaces, I would also insist that each of these guys be uh, continuous, a continuous linear map. I, I, this is the space of some of these are continuous linear maps. And then this is the co th this here is just the composition. This one takes you from E to F, and this one from F to G. So indeed, this takes you is a linear map from uh, E to, to uh, G. Okay, so these are very simple uh, uh, properties that you can check for yourself easily. And now that we are uh, equipped with this. And move on while well, I still have a lot of work to do. We move on to uh, half integrals. Imagine that x x is a half bar. And we imagine that uh, y y prime has alpha, and you can think of alpha being uh, in a one plus one half. Where I find the control y by x, and then we define the uh, what I call Raffman sums, and to be explicit, let us denote them by y y prime and this by definition is um, so delta is a subdivision tag subdivision sorry. you could take this sum and uh, this is uh, as, as expected so we are going to take the first order approximation so this is going to be y p uh, to m plus 1 x t to m plus 2 minus x t to m plus y prime to m plus 1 center the identity on e. We shall see why this is the way we should let, let it act uh, the way we want. And then you have the blackboard uh, e. 2m plus 1, 2m plus 2, minus x, 2m plus 
minus 1 into m and is everything that these are gamma Riemann sums for gamma st you won't be surprised y s I'm sorry here is the tensor product y s tensor x t minus x s plus y prime s x s t okay so this is the definition and then we say that in another definition we say that integral a b of uh, y d and then I should use exists if the raf Riemann sums have a limited small mesh. Okay, and now the uh, basic result is the following. Gamma is triangular with exponent pre alpha. We, we can view this as a lemma or whatever. If alpha strictly larger than one third, then integral AB. Uh, yes? The gamma is uh, when you do tensor product, it should be the y, again, it should be y prime x and for identity. Yes, thank you. So it acts, we let it act on the first uh, component. Mm -hmm. Um, exists and the Turing lemma. So the, the only thing we have to do is to check that gamma is triangular with exponent three alpha and then if alpha is larger than one third, then three alpha is strictly larger than one, and so we have that the integral exists, and we don't have anything to do, uh, anything more to do. So this is this is really th this computation is easy, and then this is a consequence of the Turing lemma, and we have our integral. Uh, so will I give the proof? Uh, Well, so um, first of all, um, so to, to, just to, to give a, well, I will not do the details, but it's, uh, I, I let you check the following, that if I look at, so first of all, gamma is reduced, gamma tt is identically equal to zero. The fact that th this relies on the fact that x t t is automatically equal to zero uh, when, uh, uh, and this is a consequence of chain relations if you think about it. Uh, but it's not that important. That's obvious, so it's reduced. And then if you compute, you compute gamma. And uh, wait, in which order do I do it? Gamma st plus gamma t u 
minus gamma s u and then it's easy to see that this is simply I will define RST in one second uh, This is simply equal to uh, yt minus ys minus y prime s xt minus xs. And so it should be doing the right, uh, it should be done correct. Um, I guess this deserves, uh, am I correct? Yes, this deserves the tensor product. And this is, so, and to, to get this little identity, you use, use chance relations. And now you see this guy here, by hypothesis of a control, this one is of order two alpha, this one is of order alpha, so this is three alpha. This one is of order alpha, this one is of order two alpha, so this one is also of order three alpha, so we've got the three alpha. So if I just put things here, this is two alpha, this is alpha, this is alpha, and this is two alpha. And now, also, one very important thing is the following, that in fact, and we also have, so the integral exists, and then there is one third point, which is the rough young love inequality. Now I'm wondering why, I, why, I'm, why I'm writing lover in that way. Should I, I, is it correct to put this and nevertheless add the e? Um, I don't know. Okay, anyway, so it's uh, you can you can correct, uh, and I will I will try to clean things in the notes. And the Raphian Levin inequality is the following: that integral a b y u into g. Okay, so again, here, of course, I should get the product. Minus the approximation, so this is gamma AB. I don't want to write it again in full. The norm is the appropriate norm on the tensor product F tensor E. Is le less than or equal k divided by one minus two one minus three alpha times b minus a with three alpha and uh, k. You see this gamma is in the same space, so k is uh, uh, such. Uh, gamma s uh, u minus gamma s t minus gamma t u. So this is in the same space. F times e is less than or equal to k. Uh, what I call the notation I remember s t u to the three alpha. So 
I have my space here, I use it to define k, and then whatever, I, I, I can try to find the best k I can, and then I can put it there and get this inequality. And you can, you can refine a little bit, you can uh, typically gain a factor one half or whatever on k by, by doing some optimization, but uh, anyway, what is important is really not the constant, is the, the fact that this bound exists. Yes. Sure, thank you. Um, so let me note, so this is the notation. You can write d y, I'm sorry, y times d x is ambiguous. Because y prime is not mentioned. Okay, so when you when you write down such an expression, you you have to make clear what you use as a y prime. So this is a, this is ambiguous. And very often you don't even uh, you you write it dx and not d. Uh, Bold face x, and then also you have to uh, keep in mind which uh, backboard x you are using. I'm sure that the lab to control the one prime is not unique. Yes. It does the, the integral depend on, on which, which mm -hmm. component it is? It can depend. There are certain circumstances in which it doesn't, and sometimes it depends. So you can. You, you have several controls, and the integral in the end depends on the control. So, so sometimes it doesn't, but uh, in general it does. So really, it's important to uh, well, most of the time it's from the context that you know which wave frame you are going to use, but uh, in general you should make it clear. Yeah. And we are going to see just an example. In fact, immediately, I guess. So, um, okay, so um, I, I propose a little exercise, which is well. X if alpha is larger than one half, why not? Then graph GX and young DX lead to the same integral. So, so it can it can be that uh, so. Um, in fact, I've not done it. Maybe I should. Um, did I did I mention that? Uh, I'm I'm not sure now. Uh, in fact, if you imagine that. Uh, Alpha is larger than one half. There is only one possible uh, blackboard x, which is the Young integral. I think I mentioned it at some point. Or if I didn't, I should now. There is only one x in which x is t. 
equals integral from s to t of x uh, t minus of s d x um, u this is alayon This is well. This is it's, it's easy to prove. In fact, so this is the third exercise. And now there is something which is somehow uh, well crucial or not. I don't know. So um, minimal example. Again, is a constant map. Y prime equals zero. Then the rough integral a to b of uh, y dx is equal to y. Uh, Equal y x b minus x. And in fact, I don't see any if, if x is too regular, I don't see any good reason why this should not depend on the choice you do for y prime. So this is a, maybe an example for Jeremy. Um, when we can have a dependence. I, I, I didn't try to check if uh, things would change if uh, I would change another. But I guess, well, there should be some contribution, isn't it? Um, and then almost minimal example. I imagine that. Uh, y is equal to x, y prime is equal to the identity linear map on E, and then retarded, advanced would be the same, retarded uh, rough Riemann sums. Telescopic due to chain, and the result is that, in fact, so the retarded Riemann sum along delta of uh, what I call x, x, x identity e, it's easy to see that if I made no mistake, this is just going to be x a a times x b the tensor x b minus x a so I'm not copying LaTeX plus x a b and this is true for any subdivision it's just you see this is just one of the sum if I look at the summons or if delta is the trivial subdivision this is exactly the, the value of gamma and now, whatever the subdivision, it's telescopic, and what you get in the end is that so you can, and it's Chen's chain, relation, really. So then this, and then this tells us that integral a, b, x into d, x is equal to, if I make no mistake, uh, well, I just wrote it so it's x a times x b minus x a tensor plus x a b and maybe more to the point if I put the two together integral from a to b of x u minus x a d x u 
this is going to be x a b so this is this is a little computation and somehow it's reassuring you see because when we started so it's just to, to make a comment x is badly irregular then integral from a to b uh, x u minus x a times v x a is meaningless Rough pa the, the idea of rough path use the x as a substitute So morally, we would uh, everywhere we would write down this uh, meaningless expression. We would replace it by x, and in the end, x is indeed. You find that now both sides are defined, and then x is exactly equal to the integral a to b x uh, into. Dx and a to b. So I'm sorry. It's u minus x a into v x a. So you see the uh, well the 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 theory with. Uh, uh, Try to explain. Indeed, gives re gives something reasonable in the end. You have something you don't know how to define. You introduce a new structure. This structure allows you to uh, define integrals. And then, in the end, when you compute the integrals that, that are well defined, you find what you expect. But, uh, so this one is meaningless. But in the end. Uh, we have a meaningful expression. We really compute it honestly using Riemann sums. And in the end, we have okay. So now we are going to do something that revolves around. Question that you raised, uh, I don't remember uh, who raised it, but, uh, which is the following. So uh, well, maybe I should call this, uh, it's a new section, it's listing to a rough path. So I mentioned this theorem saying that every path can be listed to a rough path, morally. But here we are in a better situation. We already have one, so we have x, x, y, y prime is there a nature of uh, the question is can we construct in a natural way? Uh, Y and also integral rough integral. And the answer is yes. And there are many ways to uh, uh, see it, but um, in fact, I will just give you the result. You 
which is simple enough and did what it took. So you know, essentially, uh, this is, well, in fact, there is a, a simple uh, and, usual, and usual differential geometry behind this uh, formula. But uh, the point is uh, the following. So imagine that you define, so I, I'm using many times the notation gamma, but it's all every time for something different. So imagine that, uh, <coughs> um, okay, so we introduce Z that goes from uh, AB to G, and imagine that Z, Z prime, is a control by Y. Okay? So if, if we are in this situation, once we have a natural uh, candidate for this guy, we can do, we can compute this integral. And the uh, main point uh, is the following that uh, gamma st it's zt tensor yt minus ys so this is you see this is the first part of a gamma you would imagine it's just the first order approximation for an integral and then um, You give yourself an object WS X ST. This is a bit long to write, so that's why I, I choose this. And then if WS is defined to be Z prime S, well, there is tensor 1F, Y prime S tensor y prime s and x st gamma st is triangular order three alpha and so check and uh, that's again I mean that's just algebra The chain relation is completely crucial. So I, I take this out of my hat, of course, but you see that in those, uh, this is the first order, the zeroth order term, let's say, it's first order in alpha, so this is typically alpha. Uh, I'm sorry, here, this one I don't need. This one is of order two alpha, so if this guy here is reasonable, this is indeed going to look like a Taylor expansion where this is a zero sort of term or, and, and then this is the first this is the first correction. Then if you compute that gamma is triangular, you apply the swing lemma. So this the check is easy, right? you just have to make a little computation and the details will be in the notes. And then by the swing lemma, Uh, integral a to b of delta gamma exists. So we have found something which is, you see, that, that's something nice. We have found we have found something that starts like uh, the computer. This is the this is the first part of what should contribute to integral of z dy. Here is a correction. And the correction is makes the whole thing regular enough that you can compute the integral.
Okay, so the, f the first thing we can do with this example, uh, well, uh, mm -hmm. blackboard why? There is no blackboard, I don't need any blackboard why for the moment. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, that's what I'm coming to. <laughs> that was my question, and, the, and, the, and so special case. Well, uh, a stupid special case is when z is equal to y and z prime is equal to one f. And then, then you get, then you get a certain uh, integral from a to b of delta gamma for this special case. So, wait, so maybe I should, I'm sorry, maybe I should take some notation for that case. Uh, yes, I should say I take some notation and I write down gamma I've tried to make all the notations so it's here it is I have y and of course if I if I were really if okay let me let me put the, it's not in the note but let, let me put the y prime just to be totally explicit so I just explicit what I call gamma there in that special case and this is Simply uh, y t y and s tensor x y t minus y s plus y prime s tensor y prime s applied to x s t and then with this I can so I, I apply the lemma. And so what I get is integral from A to B of delta gamma y, y prime x. Okay, now what do I do to this? I subtract y A, uh, y uh, T minus y A, and I define it to be Y A B. Okay. This is my definition, and then same. Y Y is a rough pass. So. Uh, so the point is that, uh, so wh why is it so? This, it's, it, the, the reason is uh, easy in fact. We have to ch change relation. Now, we already know that if you take this as a candidate for, uh, th that's something we saw very early. If we take this as a candidate to be uh, Y, the chain relation is going to be fulfilled. But it doesn't have the right regularity. Now this guy here satisfies chance relation, so it makes no contribution to chance relation. So this here tautologically satisfies the chain relations. Chain relations is tautological. And regularity is the uh, Young Levis estimate. Okay, so we've succeeded in constructing uh, the Y, which is in some sense canonically associated to the situation. And then, of course, we can use this y. And what I claim now is that, in fact, I'm coming back to this notation. One can show that, in fact, this is equal to integral from a to b So you can check that. Uh,
So, which means that to say it differently, this means uh, so it's uh, S prime tensor y prime s x x t and y s t do the same job. It's kind of the I, I don't understand. Z f is not uh, y. Well, this was this was for a special case. The special ah, that, that case. is here. This was for the special case. Now we return to the general ah, okay. Z. <laughs> to our favorite gamma here, and so you see these two these two objects here are not well. This is these these two things here are not the equal. However, they are different such small scales is small enough of order three alpha, so that you can use either of them to compute the uh, rough integral with respect to one. Yes. Either, yes. So I was naively expecting that the blackboard y would be a y prime to the some y prime. Uh, so why 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 does it why doesn't it work? It does not satisfy chain relation. Or? Yes, it does. I guess it doesn't satisfy chain relations. Yes. But uh, what is the rough path uh, bold uh, y s in general? It's well, it, I decided to take it as, as that one. Um, okay, so, so what is z? Is the z of the z special is case? Any, z is anything, anything that is controlled by y. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Y okay. And then you, then you okay. So you see, so is, there is some flavor of universality somehow or whatever that uh, tells us uh, that uh, you can use. You, so you, if you view this as a counter term, in fact, only the dominant singularity somehow contributes to the definition. The, the, uh, the lower order terms don't. Okay, so I what I suggest is that I finish what I wanted to say about this topic, even if I've been a bit long, and then we make the break. And then when uh, uh, we resume, I will. Uh, this will be funnier, hopefully. So let me just conclude. Okay. So now you will find it in the notes. Once you define an integral, of course, you you don't want to compute integral by returning to uh, uh, Riemann sums. So you need to have uh, nice things, and you have uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, you have a change of variable formula, you have the product formula, and all these can be defined for rough integrals and proven, and this will be in the notes, I don't have time to do it and even to strike it down. But it's, it's essentially what you would expect, plus some corrections, which look like, well, which look a little bit like, like what you see in stochastic calculus, so there are corrections, but, but it's, it's just easy, I mean, if if you work blindly without uh, asking, uh, well, making the estimates to show that you are right, you just can do things blindly, and uh, well, it's, it's easy. Then you, the proofs are not very difficult. So then there is so. Let, let, let me mention it. There are useful extensions. Of all the usual. Rules for integration. The fundamental theorem. Product. Uh, well, integration by parts, let's say. Mm. 
this is, this is a better way to say it in this particular case, and then change the variable. So I don't mention it. What I would like to end with for these uh, technical stuff, technical stuff, is I thought we started the first lecture by asking questions about what do we do when we want to solve control differential equations. And I would like to, so that, to show you that we at least we made a small step towards that. And this is based on the following remark. Wait, maybe I should call it four. What about graph control differential equations? And the, the remark, there is a basic remark, which is that young love says that if I define zt to be equal to integral from uh, a to t of ys tensor, well, the dxs. Then ZY is a control of uh, Z by, by X. So the well, so Y is a Gubinelli derivative. Is a Z or a Gubinelli derivative? With respect to X. So this looks like the well this this looks quite intuitive, isn't it? It looks good. Uh, okay, so now from now on we assume that D is equal to one. And we ask about dy is equal to v of y dx on a b. And so one thing we can try to do is to turn it into a an integral equation. So this would say that y t is equal to y uh, a. Let me take the initial condition, let me write in small in, in small letters, plus integral from a to t d of y s d is a possible interpretation. Now we are not already safe because for this to make sense, this should become this should be controlled by x, which is uh, complicated because we don't know where well, we don't know. If I input any y there, there is no reason that it's going to work. So. Uh, as such, the meaning is unclear, but at least we have the characterization, and that's what I would like to conclude with. So you see, th this is uh, this is not very deep. The 
point is the following. So we, t we start with y0 is just equal to y a a b and then I define y n plus 1 t is equal to y a plus integral from a to t v of y n s v x s and I, I just want to show you in a very simple way, very si I, and okay, I'll do this. And now I have to make some assumption. Y, I'm sorry, V is differentiable on R with Lipschitz derivative. And then it's easy to see that the recursion step is working. Imagine that this, imagine so, imagine that yn, suppose, so y is, so first of all, y0 with 0 is a control of y0 by x. And then, because, and then, no, okay, so that's the first step. And now imagine that yn is uh, defined, is controlled by x. And that's all, I guess. It's defined and controlled by x. Well, then, because of the properties of v, then v of y n and then y n prime v prime of y n is a control of v of y n by x. Okay, and so fine. So integral from a to t uh, v of y n v x is defined. And by the long, the long love, uh, uh, by young love, this is is defined and is controlled. By x, and so we, we infer that in fact, y, because y n plus one is defined by this formula, this is controlled. I had a constant, so this is also controlled, and so I can input the next, go to the next step, and to conclude. If I understood correctly. I'm not totally sure, but uh, this, this, okay, this is a bit technical for me. But in fact, to have convert so to have convergence, one needs more. B should be. V double prime is Lipschitz. <coughs> so V should have two derivatives, and the second derivative should be Lipschitz. And in, this is also a condition for uniqueness. of the solution
And well, for me, it's not it's it's not totally obvious to decipher that really you need the second derivative, and also uniqueness is something uh, where I have a little problem with. Uh, uh, well, let's say let's say maybe if x is tru truly wrapped, so you don't have the choice for the Gubinelli derivative. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when, well, if you remember your uh, young age, which for me is very far away, but maybe not for you, uh, even for the case of standard picariteration, picariteration makes sense for a continuous function, when V is a continuous function, that's pretty obvious. However, the convergence of the Peter spin, you need the Lipschitz. And so you see, you have you need one more degree of regularity more, and this is essentially the same thing. So intuitively, uh, you, it's for to have uh, uniqueness of the solution or to have convergence of the Picard scheme. You need one more, more one more degree of regularity than what you need just to have the Picard scheme ready. So that I think I should stop here and we resume at some point and I think this should be more fun. Less technical at least. We don't know. Maybe that was already fun. See you. Break. Oh, it's a break, yeah, sure. Okay. I think you said that enough. C'est local, c'est local aussi dans ce cas-là. Oui, parce que j'ai supposé que V était défini sur tout R, donc dans ce cas-là, c'est de l'existence partielle, mais sinon tu risques de sortir même des définitions de V en l'occurrence. Et en fait, il faut démontrer que si V est défini au voisinage de A, il y a un petit intervalle sur le de Y A, il y a un petit voisinage en temps où tu restes dans ce voisinage où V est défini. Oui, oui. D'abord, la période de l'unité du poids et de l'unité du poids. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Oui, Des, enfin, je, je me souviens, je me souviens plus vraiment comment on démontre le théorème dans le cas.
Donc, on va faire maintenant quelque chose d'un petit peu plus récréatif, en principe. Donc, l'idée, c'est de vous montrer un ou éventuellement deux exemples, mais probablement juste un qui reste, de d'apparition naturelle de, de chemins rugueux dans des choses qui ressemblent un peu. Oui. So the idea is to give you at least one and maybe two, if time permits, examples in physics where uh, Rafa's theory makes sense. And in fact, okay, let, let me let me say I will do things uh, in the opposite uh, order than uh, what I expected. And I will give you the one which is really relevant for physics. I will say very few things about it, but uh, uh, it's uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I want to give, so it's, uh, let's say, physical Brownian motion. And we'll just say a few words about it, just uh, in a magnetic field. <coughs> and the, this will be really sketchy, but one of the ways uh, to describe physical Brownian motion, if you remember, or if you don't know, I remind you, you imagine you have a particle of mass m, This is the mass of a particle. And you write down a second derivative. And you see that you have some friction. So you have a certain, uh, it's called gamma. This is friction. It's a plus. Uh, where did I, okay, so I did it very naively. So this is, and this is Brownian motion. So the, the most naive version of uh, Brownian motion given by Einstein was that, in fact, the motion of a particle Uh, submitted to shocks uh, in a colloid suspension, for instance, um, is, is Brownian motion itself. And in fact, it doesn't, well, it, you can do many interesting things, and surely Einstein did. But um, in fact, for physics, it's really better to go one order more and to say that it's not the uh, position of the particle which experiences a Brownian motion, but it's, it's speed. Okay. Yes. yes, I do. No, 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 no. That's what I wanted to do. There, there was room for it, and that's what I wanted to do. Thank you so much. So, um, so in particular, here, if you define m x dot to be equal as we would expect to the momentum, then the momentum itself is going to be up to a scale of Brownian motion, uh, essentially. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an einstein uhlenbeck process. And the reason why is easy to see is that this two right here, if you get the feeder, is minus gamma uh, divided by m. <coughs> so this is this is Einstein. And you can wonder what happens. when m goes down to zero. So it, it's, uh, there is a, an important friction. The, the friction is fixed, and you let the mass be very small. And then something interesting happens. P goes to zero. 
in a certain sense. And X becomes Brownian. And when I say in a certain sense, but P is of order M to the one half, not M. To say this is a bit a slightly big statement. There is an anomaly, of course, if you look at this and I say, okay, uh, let P, uh, let M go to zero. Well, okay, there is a M factor M in P. So, but uh, when you let M go to zero due to the properties of the equation, in fact, X dot starts to be more and more uh, irregular. And in the end, the rate of convergence of P to zero is M to the one half. So there is an anomaly. Okay, so this is uh, the standard theory. It's, it's not, by, by the way, uh, if you solve if you solve this equation, there is an, so this can be solved. This is just a side remark. By uh, Young integration theory. Of course, there is a Brownian motion here, so you could do it by stochastic calculus. But in fact, you see, B is essentially one half older. The well, uh, when you, when you solve this equation, you see it's you just have to look at the variations of B retarded by an exponential. So it's you you solve it by a variation of constants. So you have an exponential behavior, and then in the end. I would do it wrong if I tried to do it uh, like that on the blackboard. But essentially, in the end, what you get, so someone will correct me, I'm, I'm sure. So what you get is P uh, T is equal to E to the minus gamma over M T is zero plus integral from zero to T E to the gamma over M S DBS. Um, yes, that should be something like that. That's what you find. And here, of course, you could do it by stochastic calculus because it's a stochastic integral and it involves Brownian motion. But in fact, there is enough regularity that this, you see, this is almost one half. This is one older. So uh, Young theory gives you uh, plenty of room to say that this can be defined really pathwise. And just to make one more aside, in fact, you see, now we have Riemann, we have uh, stochastic integral, we have Young, we have rough integrals, whatever. And in many circumstances, a number of them are defined simultaneously. And there is a little work to do, but every time they have to coincide, they do. But it's a little work you have to do. Even because well, it, it, it requires a small argument to say that the stochastic integral and the Young integral are the same, but they, they are. But anyway, so. So, uh, but the point is that there is this small anomaly that you can see even already in this formula when you let m go to zero. In fact, uh, you cannot apply. It, it, would, it would be correct if what, once Watson lemma would apply, but Watson lemma applies only when the integral is regular. Watson lemma doesn't, and this is there is an anomaly. Now. Instead of uh, taking a friction a gamma as a friction constant, imagine you are in the multidimensional. Take gamma as a matrix. whose eigenvalues are uh, with negative, is positive, I'm sorry, real part. Okay. So then you can do, well, there are many things you can, the theory can do it, the theory carries out. Over 
And in fact, for instance, take uh, uh, e equals two, and I will I, I will have the uh, basically everything wrong, but nevertheless, and let's take here minus. Uh, so did I write it down somewhere explicitly? I'm not so sure. Um, okay, so take d equal to and rewrite the equation now that as in, in two dimensions. So that this one is equal to minus minus lambda dz over dt plus dw over dt. So this is our Brownian. We have a complex notation. And uh, lambda is equal to, how should I say, gamma. This is really the friction. And if you write the other, uh, the, what remains as HQ, something I call H3, for, you will understand why in a second, then it turns out that this is, this describes normalization of a particle. in the xy plane z is equal to x plus i y without surprise but of course with a transverse magnetic field And Q is the charge. So this is uh, precisely uh, the, uh, the th this is the way to embody in two dimensions the wedge product of uh, Q B times uh, uh, vector uh, cross product with the magnetic field. Okay, so now you can have fun and study this equation and just to say things very briefly, what happens when m goes to zero? And in fact, things are as before. If you define p to be equal to m dz over dt, and just to get my notations right, uh, I said Q equals lambda Z, and then what you find is that I write it now in a, a mathematic and in the, well, as a mathematician. So I have dPt is equal to minus dQt plus dWt, and dQt is equal to eta divided by tau dT. Dt, and I have made a small uh, change of notation. Uh, so tau is just the time scale. It's m divided by the real part of lambda. It's the time scale. And uh, eta is tau lambda divided by m, and it's a complex number real part one. If this is a way to rewrite things, and so now what you are going to do is to look at tau goes to zero. And you can do many things. 
But the point is that when tau goes to zero, p goes to zero, and tau to the one half, and uh, and q goes to a Brownian motion. But you see, of course, this doesn't apply very well. But as you all know, imagine that you are in a regular situation when you have a particle moving in a magnetic field. It just makes circles. And the circles have a size which is uh, inversely proportional to the speed or to the square of the speed or whatever. Well, anyway, so you may expect that something is going on here because due to the magnetic field the particle is going to make circles so if you compute the area spanned by the particle during time there is no good reason whatsoever why this should go to, should be small when the uh, when, when you go to uh, uh, when you let the time scale go to zero and in fact is that uh, Q and uh, the area, so it's going to be uh, uh, I should put, I should uh, write it down as a vector if I want to do it things properly and then integral Q dQ, Q dQ bar, Q bar dQ, Q bar dQ bar. Goes to a certain limit when tau goes to zero. This goes to Brownian. Brownian bar. And the non-trivial B, the non-trivial part, which remembers the area swept by uh, by the one in motion by the particle motion due to the presence magnetic field. And this B In fact, it's going to be what you would call the integral, and you would put b db, b db bar, b bar db, b bar db bar. This is Alaito. In fact, Alas Ratanovic, in fact. Alas Ratanovic means the integral of. Uh, dx dbx is equal to bx squared divided by two. I write it. I don't. There is no. There is no additional. Uh, term, if I'm correct, plus i t minus s zero one minus one is zero and of course I'm missing something which has to do with the parameters that survive in the end and also there is there, there is that somewhere I should see the magnetic. I guess it's going to be eta. Do you have a question? Uh, you should see the magnetic field. Yes 
and they, so it has to should be somewhere and where is it uh, uh, I, I'm in uh, trouble now so I, I guess so I, let, let's say that I, I wrote four millimeter two in general in fact so I have I'm in some trouble to get uh, Are you sure when you say that, I think you need to go to the integrate to get the square, so it's always the same for y, but then you have cos y is zero, divided. Yes, it's zero. Yes, it's zero. Well, uh, no, I'm sorry. The expectation is zero, but the integral itself is non-zero. That's, okay, so, uh, okay, I mean, I will make a comment on that. It's random. Yes, it, so it, yes, so there is a yes, indeed, there is a random part. So I, I will comment on that. Um, so let me right, let me put the let me try to find where the uh, eta is hidden. I'm sorry. So here is eta. Here is eta bar. Okay. Correct. So um, okay. So take this formula with a grain of salt. It will be correct in the notes. Uh, but, uh, so there is an anomaly, definitely, and there is a non-trivial half path in the end. So this is one of the examples where half path appear in a natural way. And if you think, for instance, that you use the so imagine you use this physical Brownian motion in the magnetic field as a source for another object, and you look at the limit when uh, uh, the mass goes to zero, then just as what happened for the very simple example we had, the, the one with the, you know, the particle which was just circling uh, without moving around the center, this was the example, of the minimal example of rough path I gave you, this is going to have an influence on the limiting behavior also. So, um, it will uh, it will play some some role when you solve uh, differential equations related with when Q is a source. In the small m limit, this will leave some uh, remnant of the rough path structure. Okay, so this is uh, yes. When you do two equations, then you don't need to have any correction. No, definitely. It means that the coefficient should be zero when the magnetic field vanishes. It's eta minus eta bar or something like that. It's yeah. Don't ask. It will be correct in the note. You're, you're right. It should it should definitely vanish. It will be the imaginary part of eta or something. Yes, but then okay. So but maybe maybe <laughs> maybe that maybe that if you put eta here, then this one is the eto, and when you put the real part, the the imagine the real part, then. Uh, it's certain of it. okay, so I, I, I'm lost now because I when well, my notes are, are not uh, properly written at the moment. So, uh, but uh, but there, okay, there is a, so I would like to end now with something which is an even simpler process. And, uh, to conclude, uh, yes. so the the effect of the magnetic field is yes, there is a anomalous law, and essentially the um, the thing that. Uh, Essentially, the, the thing that remains that is non, uh, we, if you if you look at, so this is defined uh, by using stochastic integrals. This is the process, in fact, okay, so just for history, the integral b x d b y minus b y d b x, you put a one half. This is called. The, this was defined by Levy before stochastic integrals. In fact, but it, but 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 in the well, it, nevertheless, it was as a stochastic integral. And you see, this is this is called the Levy area. And this is called the Levy area. First of all, it has the right dimensions to be the Levy area. But also, if you imagine that you have 
XTYT et Smooth Pass. Bounding et Region Omega. Then Area Omega. This is integral of uh, dx dy. If we put a wedge just to make things uh, the way they should, over omega. But this is also the integral of the boundary of omega of x dy minus y dx to the one half. So this is one of the standard formulae for uh, areas. And so the, the, this is just the translation from Brownian motion. This is the algebraic area that is spanned by Brownian motion when uh, two dimensions Brownian motion. And of course, in average, we expect it to be zero because there is no uh, it, uh, it doesn't touch. And, and this is indeed what it does. And and essentially, this guy here is hidden as the imaginary part of that. Thing. And uh, uh, you see the example you gave in, in one of the first lectures, usually when you're doing surfing. Well, this part here is exactly the same, and just you add the Levy area on top of it. So you spend the Levy area. Yes, sure. And you can, well, you can, you can do many beautiful things using the Levy area, and you can, in particular, compute its uh, uh, Laplace transform, the Laplace transform of the law. So if you look at packages uh, in uh, uh, for solving stochastic differential equations with more than one variable, so in more than one dimension, you can do this, the most naive approximation. And so you, you, you just keep the first term. But if you go to the second term, which is what we did with rap path, you need to know the law of the Levy area. And, uh, and in fact, so, so that's, well, that's another point I should make. So in fact, this idea of improving when you solve stochastic differential equations, improving things by going to the next order, this was implemented long before our path existed, in fact. But it's exactly, well, it's exactly uh, the philosophy of our path. The point is that when you do numerical simulations with Brownian motion, you don't really, well, you don't really see the difference between uh, pass price solution or, well, non, well, or, or probabilistic solution or whatever. Anyway. Okay, so I will now turn to something which is even simpler than this one. And it will be the conclusion. And this is what I call valsing with Brownian motion. And it's just the following. So imagine you are you are denting the valve with your favorite partner. So you're you're doing it uh, gently over the dense floor. And of course, if you dense perfectly, you will just make a small circle. You will your motion will be uh, along a circle. So you will make one step and then another step. Whatever. Don't don't dent the valve very well. But um, now the point is that. Your motion, you don't do it perfectly, so sometimes your steps are just a little bit smaller or a little bit longer than what they, uh, uh, than the average. There are, there are some fluctuations. There are also fluctuations in the angle that you turn each time you make a step. And so you, your motion is going to be a bit more complicated than just being around the uh, moving around the circle. Okay. So, uh, and we are, going, we are going to take a very simple model yes. when only steps fluctuate. The angle for each step Is the same, and so uh, 
So imagine, so I take complex coordinates where the, the, the dense floor is a, a part of the complex plane. So imagine that you start at the origin, so you are Z0 is equal to zero, and you imagine that after n plus one steps, where you are, where you were at the n steps, and then plus e i n theta uh, n or x n plus one. I'm sorry. Okay, so theta comes in the term of course we should we could let it fluctuate, but let me I will just show you some pictures so uh, kept constants. And this one is random. So uh, th there is no mystery. This is just a very simple example. That there is no re there is no real mystery in it. But so if you look at it, random but uh, not centered on zero. No, yes, random with an average, definitely. Yeah, perfectly right. Unless you're a very very bad dancer, usually uh, you. You do, uh, you do something. Um, and um, in fact, so you, even even if, if you're a reasonably good dancer, Xn is always positive, but in fact, all what you do is, uh, well, it, the, the only thing that counts in the end is that the average is strictly positive. So, that's okay for me. It's okay for you. It works. So this is uh, a sample. I don't know exactly where this motion started, but you see, indeed, you are doing little uh, circles. But of course, because the, there is some randomness uh, in the uh, in the steps, well, it's not it's not perfectly a circle. Okay, and then you can look. At, uh, you, you imagine that you dance for a very long time and you look at it from, oh, I don't, how do I get to the next one? The, um, <laughs> okay, so then you look at it, so yeah, this, you start with this, but if you look at it from uh, further away, that's what you see. And if you look at it from even further away, that's what you see. So definitely there are two scales in this problem. At short scales, you see the circles. And at large scales, you see something which in fact is wrong in motion. Two dimensional, you see, it, it's, it, well, it's not unexpected, but indeed, what you get in the end is that you have only one, one dimensional uh, uh, random walk. But in the end, what you see is a, is a wrong in motion. Okay. Um, and you can do it. Uh, you, there is, uh, this was done with taking uh, only positive steps, but if you allow for also for steps which are negative sometimes, it doesn't change much. So this is an example. And if you look carefully, you see some negative steps here, there. This one is maybe the most visible. This one also is negative. So it doesn't change much. And if you look at it from further away, you see uh, just. Uh, Making so uh, filling the dead floor somehow, and uh, again in the uh, if you look at it from very far, uh, this is what you see. And and then this was done for dancer, which made a very small angle at each step. But uh, if you make larger angles at each step and you allow for negative steps, you see that this is more irregular.
then if you look at the larger scale, so I, in principle, well, in fact, I, I, well, I did it by, well, it's, it's just visual, but somehow the, 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 uh, the, zoom, the zoom is the same for all the samples. But you see, when you go from the first to the second sample here, you don't see really that you've turned into a Brownian motion. But for this one, already at the next step, things start to look like uh, uh, more like a Brownian motion. And uh, well, in the end, that's what it looks like in any case. OK. And then you can, well, it's, it's not unexpected at all. You can compute the, uh, <coughs> the uh, area that is swept by the path, exactly the same formula as for the magnetic field. Well, you do it in the discrete case, and you, you, you just, you just com compute numerically. Uh, you just compute numerically. You, you imagine that you have a process that for you the area, and the area at time n plus one is going to be the area at time n plus. Let's say let's put a one half here. Um, this is going to be z n, z n plus one minus z n. Here let's put a bar minus. Um, I'm sorry, it's, let's say it's just the imaginary, take the imaginary part. Imaginary part of Zn bar Zn plus one minus Z. So you can plot it to see what goes on. And the simple thing that happens is the following. So the blue line is the area, really this formula. The uh, green line is the, uh, the area when you make larger steps. Basically, you make enough steps that you don't see anymore that you've been circling. So, so you see it's essentially zero. But if you really look step by step, you see something. And the red line is just the prediction of computations. And you can do it for uh, so this is in the in the wrong order I guess yes so um, this is in fact the one related to the last sample and uh, it goes it goes on. so you see uh, the 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 this, this well there is uh, this is, here this is far from perfect because we are not looking there are still fluctuations but in fact what you can show is that Again, there is an area that survives in the limit. And what happens for this little process is that if you rescale it properly, so rescale and the, the standard formula for doing that, uh, we all know that uh, it's tourne tout le temps dans le même sens. Il y a une aire. Oh, oui, c'est. There is nothing deep in. Uh, in this uh, in this story, definitely. Uh, where is it? where are my little pictures? I don't know. Of course, I, will, I lost I lost track of what I wanted to put. But anyway, is there? It's not very important. Well, anyway, the the only interesting thing in this example is that in fact in the limit. So you see what you what you do to do to do that somehow you 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 take a large n and you define a new process z n t which is uh, I guess uh, it's uh, you have to sigma square root of n over two so this is the variance of x n. And in the numerator, I always make it wrong, but uh, essentially you you take uh, let, let's do it that way. You take, let's imagine you take z uh, at times uh, uh, what is the right scaling here? Uh, uh, 
times the n we get the n to n sub the n yes. For instance, you take you you renormal you imagine you take you take a and you take n to infinity, and you so you risk you rescale just uh, the the way it should, and then what you see is that in fact z t n goes to Brownian motion. But as before, did I keep it? No, of course, that's what I decided to. The ZTN doesn't go to uh, standard B. Or Brownian motion. And it's something I well I don't understand really why, but all the examples I know for uh, that look like that is that in the end you get something which is not the standard view of Brownian motion, but it's uh, the, the difference is deterministic. That's just you see you, you, this line here is just deterministic, and you see that there are little, very little fluctuations. But it, this is just because the sample is the size of the sample is just a few millions. It's not that's not enough to kill all the fluctuations, but in the limit, the difference is deterministic, and the interest is that z infinite <coughs> minus uh, b let me okay contains an array apart, so there is array swept, but in fact it also ZZ is neither Ito nor Stratanovich. Usually, depending on the way you take the, uh, depending on the problem you look at, when you go to the continuum, the integrals of B against itself, B dB for one component, you find either Ito or Stratanovich, so you find B squared or B squared minus C. And this is one example where, in fact, there is, there is something that happens not only to the array apart, but also to the standard uh, contribution to uh, stochastic integrals. So it's a, it's, it's a very simple example that you can study really uh, with minimal uh, technical apparatus. It's just uh, computing some expectations of uh, sums see this is really very easy and in the end you what you get is a process in fact you, which can think of as an effective model if you want of Brownian motion in the magnetic field what is it pardon yes the, the yes and and again i don't know it by heart and of course i don't know why but it's it's i i, I can give you it i can give it to you it's I'm pretty sure I lost. Uh, oui, oui, oui. Ah oui, il y a pas de transition. Non, il y a pas de transition. Il y a pas. Non, non. Il y a, il y a un, un crossover, mais il y a pas de transition. Ah, il y a pas de transition. Ah, and, and one last thing is that you could you could study exactly the same uh, you could study exactly the same kind of uh, process directly in the continuum. Maybe I can take that. And the, and the result would be exactly the same if you if you come if you imagine that you define z t to be equal to integral from zero to t. Uh, this is d u the square root of two d u t to the i d theta. So you see, this is this is your this is your infinitesimal step, and this is the angle you turn. Well, this to the, uh, can be written in the same. And of course, as the, in this problem, as soon as you uh, 
as you look uh, at, um, at good dancers that make a small angle and, may, and are quite regular, you see that there is some area accumulated. But if, if you look, for instance, at this, I'm sorry. This example here, you still see basically the angle is pi over 10 for this example, but you see there are quite a number of uh, times when you go back. And it's not so easy if you if you look at uh, large angles and uh, uh, and the, the possibility to, to make backward steps uh, that arises quite often, then it's, it's more and more difficult to see that you are going to accumulate area and here, for this case here, you see, at small scales, whatever you, you could you, you could put a well, you can put a coefficient if you want. It's, it doesn't matter very much. But whatever lambda at small scales, this one is going always going to win. So let's say exactly uh, well, most, well, if you look if you discretize or whatever, half of the time you go backwards. And so it's not so obvious that you are going to accumulate area, but nevertheless you do, and it's exactly the same. You see exactly the same happen in the end. Okay, so I think it's largely time that I should stop. And I just wanted to thank you, thank the organizers very much because it was a real pleasure, and also the participants because they really were, they were really active and asked questions. So it was a real pleasure for me, and thank you very much. Uh, we have some questions. So, in the room here, no questions. We, we had a lot of questions. So, uh, just, so uh, just to answer uh, Vincent, basically, the, uh, this, uh, this piece here is tangent theta over 2. I don't like it, it's polycotangent. Okay, polycotangent. Because the theta is very small and the accumulated area is large. It's vanishes question. Oh, it's for theta equals zero, it vanishes, you're right. So no, it's so no the smaller theta, I'm sorry, no, it's theta over two. It will be clean in the notes. All the questions? No, okay, so thanks, Michel. Je voulais dire que ce genre de représentation qu'on